Uh, hello, I'm Damon, and I'm going to be showing you how to uh, how to make a nameplate on the ShopBot using Fusion 360. So first, I'll be showing you the operations that we'll be using uh, to machine this with the ShopBot. So let's go over to Cam. The first is the pocket. We're going to use that for clearing out most of the area. The contour is used to carve around the letters and the adaptive clearing is for the holes in the A, the P, and the E in this case. So we'll start first by making sure that our units are in inches. You can do this by going under the document settings and then we're going to sketch out a rectangle 5 by 10 inches. And yes, after that we're going to uh, go to extrude. Just click inside that box and just extrude it up three quarters of an inch. And now we're going to make the border that goes around the name. So we're going to make another rectangle on the top face of the box that we just made. And yeah, just make sure that all the sides are even and the border should be 0.3 inches in thickness. All right, now we're gonna extrude it down a quarter inch and just double check that the border is 0.3 inches. And now we're going to add our name. So we'll go to text under the sketch options and just click a place to start it. And then just add like a name or some text. And then you'll, you're gonna need to set the angle to 180 degrees because the text appears upside down when it comes in. And then you'll have to adjust the height to where it fits inside the box but it's not too big. And then just pick out a nice font to carve it out in. This For this one we'll be using Lucida handwriting and we'll bold it, make it a little bit thicker. Now we're just going to drag it into the box for better placement and get it more centered. All right, so now that we have the text done, we can extrude it up. So it's already selected in the extrude menu, but if it's not, you can just click on the blue text and then just go down to the distance option and extrude it up a quarter inch so that it's the same height as the border. All right, now we're just going to double check that it's all how it's supposed to be. And then we're gonna jump over to Cam and make the operations. So first of all, you're gonna to have to make sure that your units are in inches again. And after that's done, you can make your first setup, which is where all your operations are gonna go. So the only thing you have to uh, mess with in the setup is the orientation so just change the orientation to ZX and just click on the top face for the Z and then the side for the X and then you can move it over to the corner and just make sure that your Z is facing up and that your X is facing uh, to the uh, right. Okay, now we can go over and start our pocket operation, but first we have to set up our tool because there will be no tools unless you've already uh, used cam for a, uh, a part. So we'll go over and select the flat end mill and then you're going to have to measure out uh, the bit that you're using to get all these measurements. But um, for this one we're going to be using the quarter inch flat end mill. So the diameter is going to be 0.25 inches. And then the shoulder length and shaft diameter shouldn't have to be changed, but the overall length is going to be uh, 2.75 inches. And that should be good. So we'll just press OK and then just make sure that our 
quarter inch flat is selected under the tool and then you can just click the sunk down part uh, inside the border um, to select the geometry that you'll be machining and then you just want to go to the passes menu change the uh, maximum roughing to 0 0.06 and the ramp to plunge and then just disable the coolant because our machine doesn't have a coolant so now you just have to put in the feeds and speeds for the spindle it's going to be 12,000 for all of the bits that we're using and then for the quarter inch bit the feed rates are all going to be 51.42 and uh, don't mess with the feed per tooth because it will uh, change all of the other numbers so just change the spindle speed and the feed rates and then that should be good and then it'll just generate your toolpath and show you what it's going to be machining each blue line is a pass the bit uh, so now if you go to the simulation menu and turn off the tool and toolpath and turn on the stock um, you can go over to statistics and it'll tell you how long exactly it'll take to machine but if you play the simulation it'll show you exactly how the machine will carve it out So that looks pretty good for the pocket, so uh, we should be good to move on to the contour now. So we'll go over to 2D and 2D contour and change our bit. Uh, we're going to have to make another bit because we're going to use the 8th uh, the inch flat end mill for this one. So it'll have two flutes, a diameter of 0.125. and then a shoulder length of 0.5 and for the flute length we're going to have 0.45 the shaft diameter will be uh, 0.25 the body length 0.7 and the overall length uh, 2.15 Now you can press OK and just make sure that your eighth inch is selected. And then the feeds and speeds for this one, 12,000 RPM for the, for the spindle speed, and then the feed rate's 55.2. So just change all the feed rate numbers, and it'll be, it'll be good. Now for the geometry, you want to select the very bottom of uh, each of the letters it pretty much tells the machine what the limit is uh, for how deep it can go into the material. And we're also going to select the inside of the um, of the letters, like for the A, the P, and the E in this case. Uh, this isn't actually how we're going to do it, but it's just to show um, why it won't work. So again, we're going to change the multiple depths to 0 0.06 and uh, for a contour there's no there's no like changing uh, the ramp it'll always be a plunge so yeah so now we can um, yeah, change it to right conventional milling just make sure that all of them are on uh, right conventional for sideways compensation and then when those are all generated, we can simulate the contour now. Just turn on the stock. This will be about five and a half minutes, but you can speed it up in the simulation. Now you can see how the bit is going to carve just around the letters, not clear anything else. But uh, if, you, if you simulate and you look um, on the inside of the letters, uh, they'll be 
little chunks still left in it. So uh, that's what the um, the adaptive clearings for. You can see in the A, the P, and the E, there's still uh, little chunks of material that would be left over by the machine that would be really hard to remove. So it's just best to do it with a uh, another way. So we're just gonna go back into the geometry with the contour and just delete those inner lines that we had in the A, the P, and the E. So that we're just left with the outside of each letter. All right, now you can see it's only gonna machine the outside of the letters. So, uh, so there'll be no hole in the, um, the A, P, and E for the contour, but we'll clear it out with the adaptive clearing, which is the next operation that we're putting in. So yeah, you can see it carved around all the other letters, but there is still uh, little gaps in there on, on the uh, the border. It's not clean, so so we're gonna select the um, the inner part of the border and add that to the contour. Also, it'll just uh, clean up the border a little bit. And now we're going to make an adaptive, still using the eighth inch bit. It should already have the feeds and speeds in there, since you're using the same bit as before. So now you just want to select those uh, those inner lines again, like you had in the contour before. And that's all you have to select for the adaptive. And just make sure that the direction is conventional and multiple depths is set to 0 0.06 again. And then for linking, just make sure that it's on plunge and not helix. And now we can go to OK and uh, you can see it's going to machine those little parts in there. And yeah, now you can simulate the entire setup if you want, and uh, it'll show you what the final product will look like when all the operations are are done. So as you can see, it came out uh, really clean. The holes are just how they're supposed to be. So, so yeah, we're we're done.